In the poem, The Field Mouse, what is the speaker's point of view about the mouse and the farmer? How does it compare and contrast with your point of view? In this lesson, you will learn how to distinguish your point of view from a character's by analyzing the character's reactions and deciding if you would respond the same way. Let's review. We've been reading the poem, The Field Mouse, written by Cecil Francis Alexander. We know that in this poem, the speaker is a little boy, and he's talking directly to a mouse. The speaker also mentions a farmer, although he doesn't speak directly to him like he does the mouse. So what is a point of view? Point of view is how we see things. We each have a unique way of looking and thinking about the world, and our point of view is shown through our opinions and beliefs. For example, have you ever heard the saying, is the glass half empty or half full? Well, if you think the glass is half full, you might be someone who's generally more cheerful and sees the world in a positive light. But if you think the glass is half empty, then maybe you're someone who doesn't always look on the bright side. Our point of view is shaped by our past experiences and also our relationships with other people. In literature, a story or poem is often told from one or more character's point of view. In fact, the story might sound very different depending on who is telling it. We can figure out the character's point of view based on how they react to things that happen in the story. A common mistake readers sometimes make is to assume that the characters in the text have the same point of view as they do and think the characters would act the same way. But remember, not everyone sees things the same way that you do, so it's important to use text clues to figure out a character's point of view instead of just using your own. In this lesson, we will follow three steps. First, we'll reread to find examples of how a character reacts to other characters' settings or events in the text. Next, we'll ask, what do these reactions show me about how the character thinks and feels? Third, we'll decide, would I react the same way if I was in the text? Think about why or why not. So, my first step is to go back into the text and look for evidence of the speaker reacting to the characters. I'll start with the mouse. Okay, right here in line six, the speaker is watching the mouse. Huh, then the same thing happens again here on line 10. He's watching the mouse again. Now, on line 13 in the third stanza, he does something really different. He says, field mouse, field mouse, do not go. So here he's actually talking right to the mouse. Then for the rest of stanza three and stanza four, it seems like the speaker is giving the mouse a lot of advice about what he should be doing. So now I'll move on to step two and I'll take my evidence and ask myself, how does the speaker think and feel about the mouse? Hmm. So the fact that he keeps watching the mouse again and again tells me he must really enjoy spending time with the mouse. Otherwise, why do it? Maybe he thinks that mice are interested. He could be a kid who really enjoys nature. Now the next part, do not go, is pretty different from just watching the mouse. The speaker is actually talking to the mouse and telling him to watch out. Well, I know that usually if you tell someone to watch out, it's because you're worried about them getting hurt or something bad. So I bet he doesn't want anything to happen to the mouse. Now this last piece of advice also goes along with that. I think it shows us that he's a really kind speaker. He must really care about the mouse to want to give him so much advice. So now I know what the speaker's point of view toward the mouse is, but remember my question also asked me about the farmer. So I'll follow my steps again and go back into the text, this time looking for evidence about how the speaker reacts to the farmer. Let's see, I think that happens in stanza three. The speaker notes that the farmer stacks his treasure. And then later in line 17 and 18, he explains that the treasure is actually the grain that the farmer harvested. So I'll jot that down in my notes. The speaker also notes that the farmer stacked his grain with a lot of pain. Here the author is using a meaning of the word pain you might not be familiar with. He doesn't mean, ouch, it hurt the farmer to do it. Instead, the word pain shows that he went to a lot of hard work to bring in his harvest. So this tells us the speaker thinks the farmer works really hard. The other clue I see in this stanza is that the speaker actually talks to the mouse on behalf of the farmer. He tells the mouse not to steal the farmer's grain. Now I'll once again do step two and ask myself, what do all these reactions to the farmer show me about how the character thinks and feels towards him? 
Well, the thing that's really jumping out at me right away is that the speaker thinks the farmer works really hard. After all, he compares the farmer's crops to treasure. Not only that, but by telling the mouse not to eat the grain, I think he's sticking up for the farmer. He's really thoughtful and he doesn't want the mouse to ruin all the farmer's hard work. Okay, so now that I've figured out what the speaker's point of view is toward both the mouse and the farmer, I'm ready to compare it to my own. So let's see, I have to see if I agree or disagree with the speaker's point of view. Well, the first thing I'm thinking of is actually the speaker reminds me a lot of when I was little. There were woods behind the house where I grew up and I used to spend a lot of time looking for little animals out there too. I don't really mind mice as long as they're not in my house, so I think I agree with the speaker's point of view of wanting this field mouse to stay safe. But I also like that the speaker sticks up from the farmer. I personally really respect hard work and I think that we should be kind to others too. So it seems like my personal point of view is actually pretty similar to the speaker's, but remember, it's okay if you disagree. That's actually part of what makes reading so fun, when you get to meet different characters and decide if you're similar or different from them. So now I'll take all these thoughts and turn them into my written answer. Since I'm actually answering two questions in one, it's a good idea to break up my answer into two paragraphs. So let's see, remember my question said in the poem, The Field Mouse, what is the speaker's point of view about the mouse and the farmer? So I think I'll write, the speaker's point of view toward the mouse and the farmer is kind and thoughtful toward both. He wants the mouse to stay safe and have plenty to eat, but he also respects the farmer. He knows the farmer went to great pain to do his job, and he doesn't think the mouse should eat his grain. Now in my second paragraph, I'll answer the second part of the question, how does it compare and contrast with my point of view? So I think I'll write, I agree with the speaker's point of view toward both the mouse and the farmer. Like the speaker, I enjoy exploring outside and watching animals. However, I also think it's important to respect hard work. Like the speaker, I think we should be kind to everyone, both people and animals. Remember, in this lesson, we followed three steps. First, we reread to find examples of how a character reacts to other characters, settings, or events in the text. Next, we asked, what do these reactions show me about how the character thinks and feels? And finally, we decided, would I react the same way if I was in the text? Think about why or why not. In this lesson, you have learned how to distinguish your point of view from a character's by analyzing the character's reactions and deciding if you would respond the same way.